Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2021 with the Boston Celtics. It's March 14th. We're closing in, I believe, on the end of the season. I don't know how many games we have left. A handful. Well, I mean, we're 45 and 22. We have 67 games, so we got 15 games left. So we'll probably sim this one up through the end of the regular season, and then we'll start the presumably or pre- the, the presumed postseason. Uh, next time. So before we get to it, let's just take a look around. I kind of messed around with some of this stuff. I, I, I there's just there's so much that I just forgot a lot of this <laughs> stuff was here. Honestly, um, nothing major. A lot of moving people from the the G League and back. Uh, magazines. We got the rookie guide, the upcoming free agent guide, which we'll look at. The season preview. Um, had us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Had us eighth, um, but we are currently in first place, so things are looking pretty good for us there. Um, and then I also wanted to look at the power rankings, which are right here. We currently sit fifth, uh, so we're up three points from last week, which is good. The Bucks at fifty-one and seventeen. The Lakers at fifty-two and fifteen. The Pacers, the Nets, us, the Suns, Warriors, Nuggets, <clears throat> excuse me, Atlanta Hawks, and the Clippers round out the top ten. And then I thought this was really neat uh, to look at draft picks, uh, who's got what. And you can see we don't have our first this year or our first in 2023. We traded our first to the Knicks this year in the Obi Toppin trade. We traded our first in 2023, which could come back to haunt us um, in exchange for Dort. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. We have our second this upcoming year and a 2022 first. Um, But I'm honestly, I'm thinking... And you know it's still a ways away, but I'm kind of thinking ahead here. Um, I this this to me isn't working. Um, I, at least I mean it's not it's not working long term. I mean Thompson is fine. He's going to be on a on a, an expiring contract next season. Um, so I might see if I can move him as soon as the season ends and and kind of get back into the first round. I like drafting. Yeah, it's part of the fun, so I'll see if I can bring uh, Tristan Thompson back into the fold. Um, or move Tristan Thompson, move the contract, and uh, get back into the first round. And run with, uh, excuse me, run with Robert Williams and, and Taco next season. So, um, I don't think there's anything we need to do contract-wise. I can't resign Taco yet. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent, so we're going to have to just go after him in the off season. Uh, Berea, Corver, Teagle, I'll be gone. We'll renounce those rights. So that'll free up, what, about $6.5 million roughly. <clears throat> we'll probably, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Grant Williams has any value. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about exercising his option and then trying to move him. You know, maybe if I can include him and Tristan Thompson. In fact, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to exercise his option. And I'm going to exercise the option of Peyton Pritchard. Actually, I may as well just do all this now. Let's just exercise all these options so that I don't forget. Um, so we can look to move Robert Williams and Tristan Thompson. That's about, what, $12 million, $12.5 million there. So um, that'll free up some salary cap space, but also... Um, like I said, that you know that might that might allow us to get back into the first round, which is something I am interested in doing. So, um, all right, let's get going. So, last episode I already went through standings and stats, but just as a quick reminder, where we stand, we're in first place. We're up by a game. We're eight and two in our last ten. Uh, we just got Jalen Brown back, and he is going to. I think we set our lineups right. Yeah, so we're gonna sim uh, start our sim against the 22 and 46 New York Knicks and we win 118 to 91 and look at that Jalen leads us in scoring with 22 points as we win by 27 Jalen 22 points 10 of 13 shooting in his first game back I will take it Tatum 15.7 rebounds eight assists uh Neesmith had 11 off the bench Robert Williams had eight bench played really well man look at that Dort had five Toppin had seven Pritchard had eight um, we were up 28 to 11 at the end of the first quarter. Kemba 21 and 13. So nice to have that third uh, weapon back in Jalen Brown for sure. 
Luka Doncic just scored his 5,000th point. So now we go to the Raptors. We're only 17 and 17 on the road, so a win here would be nice. And we lose. So we are uh, we have a losing record on the road, which is a bit shocking considering our overall record. Uh, Tatum, Brown, and Thompson all had double figures. Tristan led us 16 and 9. Uh, ooh, Kemba had a rough game. 3 of 15 shooting. Tatum wasn't much better at 4 of 15. Uh, and the bench didn't have a great game. So uh, we're under 500 on the road. And we are a half game up on the Nets, who we're going to be playing today on the road. So if we win, we stay in first place. If we lose, we drop to second. And we win. And we win convincingly. We won by 18 points on the road against the Brooklyn Nets. Jason Tatum, 28 points, almost a triple-double, 9 rebounds, now almost a quadruple-double if you add in his turnovers. 28 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, and 7 turnovers for JT. Jalen Brown only played 18 minutes. Uh, Kemba bounced back with a good game, 24 points. Peyton Pritchard, 10 points off the bench. Dort, Lug, uh, Lugans Dort with his best game as a member of the Celtics. 10 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 steals. That's worth the first round pick. And Obi Toppin didn't play. Again, he's hurt. He's gotten hurt a couple of times. Kyle Korver got some minutes. Robert Williams had 10 and 8. So, good game there. And, yeah, I mean, that's what you get out of the Nets. Durant and uh, Irving, this is obviously without um, Harden. So, uh, we got a message. Tatum... No, I'm not going to say Jason Tatum's been bad. I'm going to encourage him. Jason Tatum's the man. All right, so we win that one, and let's move on. So we'll probably just play through these 15 games, and then we'll just look at the end of the season, and then that'll be the episode. So I don't know exactly how long this is going to be. I guess it all depends on how long it takes us to get through the next 13 games as we take on the Wizards on the road. And we win a high-scoring affair, 136 to 130. And it didn't even go to overtime. So Tatum, 35 and 6. Kemba Walker had 32. Jalen had 22. So that's what you like to see there. Uh, off the bench, Neesmith had 14. Got contributions from everybody. Uh, Taco had 7. Williams and Corver each had 6. Pritchard had three points, four rebounds. So we got contributions up and down the lineup. Toppin's out for another couple days. A um, lot of lead changes, 17 lead changes. The game was tied at nine times. Russell Rest Westbrook went to the line 23 times and had 49 points in a losing effort. So we come out on top. Look at that second half, man. We scored 78 points, and they scored 76 in the second half. That must have been a wild game. All right, so we are over 500 on the road now, which is good. We've won three out of four so far in this episode. And now we go on the road against Memphis. And we lose that one, 108-105. Kemba and Tatum each had 23. Jalen struggled, only had nine. Robert Williams with 11. Top and back in the lineup had 10, so... Drop that one to Memphis. That's okay. Not ideal, but it is what it is. You're not going to win every game. We'll sim ahead. And I don't really know what my long-term plans are for this series. I mean, usually you play these things until you win them all, but if I win it all year one, I'll probably just keep going. Uh, I'll probably play it for a few seasons anyway and uh, kind of go from there. So, All right, we're back at home finally to take on the Trailblazers. We're 29-5 and at home, and we lose that one. So we were... Pretty dominant at home, and we lose this one 141 to 131. So let's take a look at stats. Carmelo. How's Carmelo doing this here? 15 points and six rebounds. He is absolutely not, uh, he's making almost nothing, man. That's crazy. Carmelo Anthony continues to provide offense. He might be an intriguing free agent, depending on what he wants when the season's over. Lilliard with 38, McCollum 36. For us, all five starters in double digits. Kemba had 31, Tatum had 22, and 9. Tristan with a double-double, 10 and 10. Bench played pretty well. Williams, Top, and Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard, 15 points and 7 assists in just 15 minutes. He is, just like in real life, he's out playing his, uh, his ratings here. So Peyton Pritchard looking really, really good. But we dropped that one. Let's take a look at the standings real quick, see if we still sit in first place. We don't. We're a half game behind Brooklyn as we're only, we've lost two games in a row now. So 
Got to make a bit of a run here down the stretch. Take on the Timberwolves at home. And we have an injury. Who's out? Tristan Thompson's out for four days. And Taco's out for four days. Okay. So Robert Williams is going to get some pretty crazy play time out there at center tonight. Let's go ahead and adjust this. I wish there was a way to just kind of click a button and say, Play all 48 minutes, you know, to kind of reset it all so that you can make the adjustments as needed. But, hey, you know, whatever. Uh, all right, so I guess Grant Williams is going to get those backup center minutes as minimal as they're going to be. I mean, it's it's only going to be a few minutes a game, and then Robert Williams is going to play starter minutes. Yeah, that works. As we take on the T-Wolves at home. And we win by 30, 103 to 73. So the defense came to play today. Uh, Robert Williams with a double-double, 10 points, 13 rebounds. Kemba led the way with 30. Tatum, 21 and 9. Jalen Brown, 18, 8 and 5. What's he doing since he come back? Its average is down a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, bench didn't provide a ton in this one, but they weren't terrible. Uh, Toppin was only 2 of 8 shooting. Grant was 0 of 2. So, got a sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and sim ahead. Let's sim ahead again. Our next game is today against the Heat. Do we have anybody back yet? Oh, well, Toppin's out again. Uh, but we do have Tristan back. Obi Toppin keeps getting hurt, man. And they're all like little nitpicky injuries where it knocks them out for two or three days at a time. Nothing major, thankfully, but something to keep an eye on. All right, so Robert Williams... Uh, yeah, that works. And then it'll just make adjustments based on... Oh, let's move him up here. I don't care if Teague plays. I'd rather Corver play than Williams because he can shoot, so we'll go with that. All right, so we're taking on the Heat at home. And we win by 33. Wow. 132 to 99. Jason Tatum with a huge game. 33 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 4 steals. Kemba, 22 and 9. Robert Williams, 9 of 10 shooting, 18 points, 6. Look at that stat line. 18 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, 4 steals, 2 blocks in 27 minutes. So that works. Kyle Korver came in, got some minutes. It was a plus 7, so that's nice to see. All right, cool. Easy victory there as we move ahead. We take on the Magic, game number 76 of the year. And we win again, 116-104. to 104. Jalen Brown led us this time. 7 of 13, three-pointers for Jalen. 23 points, 5 rebounds. Tatum, 27 and 5. Kemba, 19, 7 and 7. And is Toppin still out? I think he's back officially next game, but... Uh, Neesmith and Robert Williams with another huge game, another 9 of 10 game. What's his shooting percentage this year? 73% on the season. It's crazy. Almost automatic down there. Sim ahead. We got a message. We have three messages. It's all draft things, I'm assuming. And Kemba. Yeah, Kemba's great. We're going to offer praise. He doesn't seem impacted. Uh, depth. Taco's back, so we got to get Taco some minutes. Not many because Robert Williams is playing so good. Do that. Yes, we will do that. All right, so let's sim ahead. We're 51 and 25. Taking on the Bucks at home. Big game here. The 56 and 20 Bucks come to town. And we lose 120 to 117, and Jalen Brown got hurt again. So let's look at that first. 
And it's only a week. And we lose Thompson again. Ugh. This is killing me, man. Just, just a constant stream of injuries. More than anything, it's the, the going in and clicking over and over and over and over and over again is just getting old. I wish there was a way to just say, all right, I want to sub this guy for this guy's minutes, and I want to sub this guy for this guy, and just kind of leave it at that. Oops. Uh, so Taco is going to come in and get some minutes. Taco is going to come in and get some minutes. Uh, Jalen is going to get swapped with Neesmith. Actually, I should probably swap him with Toppin now that I think about it. We'll sort out who's going to play where in just a minute. All right, so Jalen Brown's minutes are gone. We'll do that, and then we'll give those minutes back to JT. Uh, that, so I got Toppin playing all 40 minutes. That obviously isn't going to fly. Um, do that, uh, and then, uh, but, 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 what do I want to do here? I guess this. Give Tatum a bit of a breather there. And I think we'll leave it at that for now, I guess. So let's take a look at the box score. Giannis only had 14. It was Middleton who killed us. Middleton always kills us, man. 31 points for Chris Middleton. Uh, for us, Tatum led the way with 27. Kemba had 21. Toppin with 14 off the bench. Dort with 12. Another solid game off the bench for Dort. He was 4-5 from behind the three-point line. So uh, lose a game against one of the best. It's nothing to stress about. We'll continue to move on. And the Pacers come to town, 52-26 and 26 Pacers, and we win by nine. Now Taco is hurt. Just constant, constant injuries. I don't know if that's the game, but it just it feels unrealistic. But I'm not going to not gonna be one of those guys who complains about injuries. It happens, and we'll deal with it. So Taco had 21 points and seven rebounds off the bench, and then he got hurt. Uh, Tatum had 34. Toppin with 20. was a perfect 8 of 8 from the field, and Kemba had 24. So let's see how long Taco is out for now. Ten days. All right, so fine. We'll give those minutes here. So we will go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Uh, like that, I think. Yeah. So it's 26 minutes for Thompson, 22 for Thompson, or for Williams. And we'll continue to move ahead. Let's look at the standings again. Let's see where we see where we are. Ah, we're tied for first place now. 52 and 26. We have identical conference records and identical division records. So I'm not entirely sure how they are going to uh, how they are going to address that tiebreaker. It could be um, home and road. I don't know. Head to head, probably. Lakers are up to 62 and 16. They just are not losing. I think they're 10 and one now in their last 11. They just the improvements they made at the trade the trade deadline, just crazy. Picking up both Derrick Rose and uh, Victor Oladipo. Oof, is Oladipo's contract up at the end of this season? Yeah, it is. So it's probably well. I know. I mean, they're gonna be able to re-sign him because of the weird NBA um, 
free agent rules. I still don't fully understand them. As you'll see when we get to free agency and stuff, I don't, <laughs> still don't fully understand how it works, but I let the game do a lot of the work for me. So we go on the road against the Magic, and we win 115-91. to 91. And look at that. We suffered another injury. Aaron Neesmith is out now. That's the Lakers. That's not what I wanted. Neesmith is out for 15 games. Wonderful. Uh, all right, so I guess Kyle Korver's getting some playing time here. Let's give Obi some extra minutes, and let's throw Korver in there. Because we're now down uh, two of our wings, which is no good. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Power forward minutes, need to go to Grant Williams, not... All right, so, yeah. I mean, I guess, right? Corver's now going to play 18 minutes a game. It's not quite what we signed up for, but uh, let's actually, let's bring Grant Williams in here at the small forward. Yeah, I guess let's try that. Uh, let's take a look at the, the box score. We didn't look at that yet. So we won by 26. Tatum, 21 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists. Kemba had 18, Robert Williams 16 and 5, Pritchard with another nice game, 15 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists for the rookie. If he doesn't end up on one of the all-rookie teams, I'm going to be really disappointed. Numbers aren't great, but I mean he's been, he's been fantastic as our backup point guard. Uh, Toppin with 17 and 7, so Obi continues to play well for us. Now we take on the Heat in Miami, another big game for us. And we win again, 117-104. JT had 35 in that one. 14 of 18 shooting for Tatum. Seven rebounds, five assists, four steals, three blocks. He is a super star, man. Obi Toppin had 17, Tristan 19 and 8, Kemba 18 and 7. Uh, off the bench, Williams and Dort each had 8. Corver with 7, doing what we need him to do, coming in and doing a little bit of shooting. As you can see, he's a 90 outside shooter. So we can still shoot the ball, which is really all I want him for. Just stick him in the corner and let him drain those threes. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, we're without three of our rotation players right now in Brown, Fall, and Neesmith. So let's head to the next game and see if any of them are back. Next game is against the Pistons. Do we get anybody back yet? Uh, Jalen is back. Cool. All right, so... B -b 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 Toppin's playing really, really well starting, but I gotta go with Jalen in the starting lineup. And then we just force Obi into the lineup pretty much everywhere we can. So let's go ahead and give all the small forward minutes back to Jalen, and then we will readjust. All right, so Obi Toppin is gonna come in. Small forward, small forward, small forward. Comes back in as the power forward there. Um, let's give Jalen a couple minutes off here. And then small forward, small forward, small forward, small forward. Like that. Nope, not like that. Because I want to make him the power forward here. And here and here. And those minutes can go to whom? I guess they'll just go to, yeah, that's fine. So Jalen's playing 36, Toppin. Yeah, I want him playing more than that, but right now he can't. So yeah, Tatum's playing 40 minutes, so actually he can. All right, I'm happier with it. I'm happier with that. So, all right, let's sim now this game against the Pistons. A game I was going to say we should have won. We should win really easily, and we won by 34. Yeah, 116 to 72. We outscored them 54 to 22 in the second half. Tatum had a double double, 21 and 10. Thompson had a double double, 10 and 11. Pritchard and Robert Williams both went eight for nine shooting. Robert had five rebounds, Pritchard six assists. So. I've really, I think, improved my bench over the course of the season. 
Uh, the game didn't want to start Pritchard. It wanted to start Teague, and I didn't want to start Teague. Uh, but picking up Dort, picking up Toppin, um, and just allowing Pritchard and Williams to play a little bit more has really, really helped us, I think. So, um, all right, cool. Let's move on. Let's him to the next game and see if we get any, get anybody back. We're taking on the Bulls now. Taco's out for another three days. Neesmith is out for another 11 days. So we got to play a couple more games as we are. Take on the Bulls. We're 33 and 7 at home. Make it 34 and 7 as we win in a high scoring affair, 133 to 126. It's skipping ahead. Oh, we made the season's over. Okay. That was our last game of the year. I didn't realize that. How time flies. All right. So if we look at the last game of the year, Jason Tatum, 29 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals. Jason Brown, Jason Jalen Brown with a big game, 29 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 blocks. Marcus with his best offensive performance in a while. Kemba had 14. Thompson with another double-double. Robert Williams, 8-for-8 eight eight shooting, 16 points. What did he finish shooting on the air? 74% on 413 shots. That is insane. Obi Toppin with 8, Pritchard with 7. All right, so let's take a look. Let's look at the standings. And we finished first, three games clear of the Brooklyn Nets, 56 and 26. We finished eight and two in our last 10 with the second best record in the East. So we're going to be taking on the number seven seed, whoever that is. We'll take a look in a minute. Uh, the Bucks finished 59 and 23. Pacers finished second there. And the Hawks win the Southeast with a 48 and 34 mark. The Washington Wizards lost 16 games in a row to end the season. So tankathon there in the nation's capital. Out west, the Mavericks and the Pelicans and the Spurs all finished 45 and 37 on the year. Uh, I think Dallas is actually going to take the top spot. I'm not entirely sure how. I don't know if it's, again, I don't know if it's division record or head-to-head. -head, but Dallas, New Orleans, and San Antonio all finished the same. Denver ran away with the Northwest. 10-game win there. And the Lakers absolutely ran away with the Pacific when it was all said and done. 66 and 16. So um, I'm going to take a look at their stats after I look at ours. So let's look at our stats. And if there, are, guys, if there are any regular season stats, if there are any teams you want me to take a look at uh, when we get back into the next episode, I'd be more than happy to. You know, before we start the uh, the postseason, so just leave a comment and let me know where you want me to look. But Jason Tatum, great year, twenty three point eight seven rebounds, four point nine assists, almost two steals, almost a block a game. He was everything we wanted him to be, and he's locked up for the next four years after this one. Jason Tatum will be, if I have anything to say about it, will be a Celtic for life. He was just phenomenal. Um, let's see if there's anything here we want to look at. Yeah, I mean, career high in shooting percentage, free throw percentage, three-point percentage, career high in assists, career high in rebounds, career high in steals, career high in blocks. Um, just everything, points per game, assists per game, rebounds per game, minutes per game. He was a machine this year for us. Kemba had a really nice year, uh, 21.7, six and a half assists, four and a half rebounds. Uh, Kemba, uh, I, man, I wish real life Kemba stats ended up like this. Uh, had a better season this year than he did last year for us. More points, more rebounds, more assists, so... Uh, really nice year out of Kemba. Jalen Brown was injured for half the season, but finished at 17, 5, and 3. I will take it as a number three scoring option. A little bit light from where Jalen is in real life, but, you know, the game couldn't... While the game predicted Jason Tatum's explosion, I don't know if they could have predicted uh, Jalen Brown's. Obi Toppin we brought in and was really, really good as another option for us. Uh, average under 12 a game for the season. We'll be able to see exactly what his stats look like when the season ends. It'll separate Boston and, and New York, and we'll be able to see. But, I mean, you can see. I mean, his points per game average was up about a point and a half after he came over to us. Um, so, you know, you assume he averaged somewhere around 13 a game for us, 13, 13 and a half, something like that. Tristan Thompson averaged just under a triple-double a game, 11 and 9. He was really good for us. I mean, I have no complaints about Tristan Thompson. Like I said, we are probably going to move on from him, use him as trade bait to try to get back into the first round um, next year. 
but uh, we'll see. Aaron Neesmith, pretty good rookie season, 10 points, 3 rebounds, shot lights out, 44% from behind the three-point line, 53% from the field. Marcus Smart doing Marcus Smart things, uh, right what you would expect pretty much across the board. Low 40 shooting percentage. Three-point shooting was a little light. I expected it to be a little higher than that. Very good free throw shooter, good rebounder, good with the ball, good on the ball, almost two steals a game. Robert Williams was a revelation. Only played 16 minutes a game, shot 74% from the field, averaged 8.2 and 4.7. He'll be our starting center next year, more than likely. J.J. Barea came in midseason when we were suffering all sorts of injuries and did a nice job. Didn't play really at all over the last 30 games of the year or whatever, but did a nice job for us in the minutes he had. Peyton Pritchard, I think, had a really good rookie season, 6.2 points, 2.7 assists, 1.9 rebounds as our backup point guard in 15 minutes a game. I'll take it. Uh, Taco, uh, that's a bit surprising that he only shot 44% from the field, averaged 5.8 and 4.3, but if we can bring him back as our backup center next year, I'll do it. Jeff Teague's not long for the team. He didn't play badly, but real-life Jeff Teague soured me on video game Jeff Teague, so <laughs> I just am not interested. Uh, Lugens Dort came over midseason, and his shot was just a train wreck. Um, I'm hoping he can work on that in the offseason. He shot 31% from the field, 22% from behind the three-point line. Um, his peripheral stats are pretty good. Averaged three rebounds, an assist and a half, and a steal and a half a game. So played good defense, but I don't know if he was worth giving up that first-round pick. Kyle Korver came in. Um, again, he's there to, to, to provide some shooting if we need it in the postseason, so we'll see what happens. Grant Williams, um, I like Grant in real life, but in the game here, it just doesn't uh, doesn't carry over. Can't shoot, can't really do much, so he'll be probably gone next season as well. Um, I don't really even know what most of these mean, so let's look at the stats key. Points of show uh, within, okay, within... Oh, that's interesting. So it shows you the number of shots that are within a certain range. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Uh, um, yeah. So I don't know if there's anything here you want to look at, but you can pause it if you'd like. I'll actually switch over to PER. So you can see who our most efficient players were and... I don't think that's much of a surprise. I think it's a bit of a surprise that Thompson is where he is, given his offensive limitations, but he played good defense and uh, did a nice job uh, um, collecting rebounds, which is what Tristan is known for. So let's take a look at the league leaders. So Trey Young finishes the season leading the NBA and scoring at 35 a game. James Harden, Lillard, Irving, Durant, Curry, Doncic, Donovan Mitchell, Bradley Beal, and D'Angelo Russell finish in the top 10. Jason Tatum was 20th. Assist per game, Luka Doncic, 11.5 assists a game. Lillard, 10.6, Morant, LeBron, Simmons, Young, DeRozan, Westbrook, Brogdon, and John Wall. Uh, Kemba was 24th. Rebounds per game, Gobert, Capella, Drummond, Ayton, Whiteside, Adebayo, Ante Tacumpo, Sabonis, Davis, and Valensunius. That's not right. <laughs> Valensunis, Jonas Valensunis uh, from Memphis, average 10.5. Tristan Thompson was 18th. Uh, blocks per game Davis, Lo Brooke Lopez, Rudy Gobert, Wiseman, Isaac Whiteside, Porzingis, Turner, John Collins, and DeAndre Ayton. Tatum was 25th. Tatum, Tatum was 25th. Steals per game, Leonard, Holiday, Simmons, Peyton, Isaac, Harden, Davis, Van Vliet, Westbrook, Levine, and we had three uh, averaging a, a steal and a half. Tatum, Smart, Brown, and then Dort is down there at 50th. Field goal percentage, Mitchell Robinson shot 81% from the field. I mentioned last episode that I think I might try to try to secure Mitchell Robinson and run with Mitchell Robinson and Robert Williams in my uh, as my starting center next season. So that might be, see if the Knicks are interested in Tristan Thompson. I can't imagine they would be, but we'll see. Uh, Three-point percentage, Seth Curry shot 50% from behind the arc. We had three in the top 14, Tatum, Neesmith, and Toppin. 
player efficiency. Doncic was number one. Tatum was 18th. Uh, I want to take a look at the Lakers stats. And again, unfortunately, it doesn't. It's not going to separate it. So I'm not going to see how those players did after they came over to um, after they came over to the Lakers. Um, Derrick Rose averaged 22 and seven. 22 set. Yeah, I mean that's old school Derrick Rose right there. I mean, like he's back, man. At least in this game, he is back. Um, 22, seven and four. Uh, for the year, he averaged 26 and four. So the the numbers were down a little bit with the Lakers. So, um, and then Oladipo, uh, his numbers were right in line. So he it hasn't listed as playing with Minnesota too, because he got traded from Indiana to Minnesota, then from Minnesota to the Lakers. So uh, almost right in line. So 15, four and five with the Lakers. So um, that was a really solid pickup. So they traded him to the Timberwolves for Rubio in a second. And then the Lakers got him for next to nothing, man. Dennis Schroeder and Wilson Chandler for Victor Oladipo. So I might have to start messing around and seeing if we can land some of these bigger players, because that is an absolute steal for the Lakers to pick up a young Victor Oladipo, only 28 years old. So um, you look at their stats and I just, I don't know how you're going to beat them. Uh, LeBron is only out for a day. They've got LeBron, Davis, Rose, Oladipo, Harrell, Kuzma. Um, I mean, that's just, that top six is just crazy good. Although Kuzma only scored six and a half a game this year, but that's because he didn't get to play much or didn't get to, didn't get to touch the ball much with these guys out there. So, uh, yeah, so let's take a look and see who we're going to be taking on in the first round. The Chicago Bulls. We're going to be taking on the Chicago Bulls. So let's look at the Bulls roster before we call it an episode, shall we? So the number seven Chicago Bulls, number seven seed Chicago Bulls, finished the season 39-43. and 43. They scored 107 points a game. They gave up 110. They're led by Zach Levine, Zach Levine who is out for nine days, so they're going to be without their leading score for the next week and a half. That stinks for them. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., 14 and a half and nine and a half. Kobe White in his second season, 13 points, four assists, three rebounds. Lori Markinen, 12 and five. And then beyond that, it's not very good. Otto Porter Jr., uh, Garrett Temple, Patrick Williams, the rookie. Uh, looks like he had a pretty good year for them, eight and three. Thaddeus Young, uh, doing Thaddeus Young things. He's a pretty. Important piece, Thomas Sadoransky. They pay him a lot of money to score seven points a game. And then from there, it's not very good. So in theory, we should have no problem against this Bulls team, especially without Levine. So we will see how it goes. Uh, but that's going to be for next time. We will do, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll probably do it like I do my franchise hockey manager uh, playthrough where I sim through... Um, sim through the series until we get to an elimination game and then we play the elimination game or quote unquote play the elimination game it's probably how i'll handle it so um yeah let me know your thoughts uh you know leave me a like subscribe you guys know the drill um i appreciate you hanging out appreciate you watching and until we talk again take care bye bye